So these solar panels are super cheap. For $50, each one produces 250 watts. We have 16 of them, so the price was $800, and we get four kilowatts. And for the price, I don't think you can find anything better. If you can prove me wrong in the comments section below, I challenge you to do so. And today we're gonna to replace my old array. These bifacials gave me on average 11% more than my monocrystallines from Rich Solar. In the future, we're gonna try different mounting options for these bifacial solar panels so we can increase the output. These can be really good if you lift them off the ground and they have adequate cooling. So let's remove this array and then throw in these budget panels. These panels weigh nothing compared to bifacial solar panels. These are like half the weight, I swear. What's nice about cheap panels is I don't care how close they are to the ground and the degradation, because they are so ridiculously cheap that I don't care. <laughs> so first array has six solar panels in series, but we need to add two more. I have 16 panels on that pallet, but we have two more panels from previously. So we'll actually have 4,500 watts now. Almost done. Man, I'm tired. This is a lot of panels. 4,500 watt array built in less than one hour. And the bricks angle the panels at seven degrees and at my latitude, that's plenty for summertime. I should get five to six sunlight hours. And for this array, we have three strings. Two are in parallel and then the third goes to the second input on the LV6548. That unit can handle 8,000 watts and we're only pushing 4,500 watts into it. And voltage open circuit for each string is 200 volts, which means these conductors are extremely oversized. We will have very minimal losses. And last week I added another solar input for the third array. And we can actually have a fourth array and we have a fifth array on top of the roof. So yeah, five strings for this system, but it's still early morning, so the output is pretty low. So I'm gonna come back in a few hours and we're gonna see what it maxes out at. But this is a good time to see if any of these panels are shading other ones. And so far we have some really good clearance between these, but I see a dirty panel right in the middle. So I'm gonna wipe that down before we actually test everything. Now the sun is directly overhead and we hit peak irradiance on one of my grid tie systems. So let's see how much this thing's actually producing. We have 2.24, that was the max I just saw. So let's call it 2.2. 2.23, this is the output of the first two strings. And string number two, I just saw it do 1.1. 1.12, so for all three strings, we're pulling 3,320 watts, which is 73% of their rated output. So 2% less than a brand new monocrystalline at least the ones that we tested last week. So it's not as good as the bifacials, but man, for the price, this is some serious power. But the real question is how much it can produce over the course of a day. So I'm gonna log that data over the next week and see what the average is. Also, I just got a new DC clamp meter. This is not sponsored, but this thing can measure inrush current and it can measure up to a thousand amps. And it was super cheap. So I'll have a link below. We're gonna make a video on this too. But let's use it to see what the current is from each string. So first string is 9.7 amps. Second string is 8.5, 8.7 amps, 8.8 amps. Third string is 9.1 amps. That's pretty good, you guys. And this row of panels had some really dirty ones. I actually used a white washcloth and it turned it black. So I probably need to wash this one a bit more. And after washing them, if I can hit 80% of their STC on a hot day, that would be incredible. So let's estimate how much this could produce. So theoretically, we should be able to pull 24,750 watt hours a day, which can propel my Tesla Model 3 99 miles. So with an array that's less than $1,000, an all-in-one system that's $1,400, and a pretty expensive battery, you can actually charge a Tesla or you could use this much power to run an air conditioner for like a 1,000 or 2,000 square foot home, depending on how hot it is, obviously. The big downside of the system is it doesn't have a split phase output. I might need to add a second one and put a bigger breaker box because I want to power larger loads. These batteries just charge up so quickly now. I can charge this 14 kilowatt hour battery bank in less than one day. 
So I'm gonna have this air conditioner running 24 hours a day to keep the battery discharged so I can actually track how much this array is producing. Because, yeah, this is a lot of power now. And honestly, I might throw those bifacials in front of there. And I have another Outback controller right here and then see how much we can produce then. With those bifacials, I could do 35 kilowatt hours every single day, which is a ridiculous amount of power. I should also add that the size of this array is massive. Compared to the bifacial solar panels, it's about twice the size, but it's less than half the cost. Also, the price does not include shipping, but you buy it by the pallet. So try to fill up that pallet so you can get the cheapest shipping price possible. If you have a full pallet, it's very cheap shipping, but if you try to buy one, then that would just be silly. Also, if you didn't know, these are used panels, so they are tested for their output. I'm not sure what happened from the other Santan panels. The Jinko panels they sent me, the variation in output was absolutely awful. But with these, the current from each series string and the voltage open circuit across each one matches, unlike the Jinkos that they sent me out previously. Also, on my previous video, you can see a lot of people commenting saying that they have the same results with these exact panels. So I'm not sure with the other Santan panels if they're good or not, but these ones are good. I haven't seen a single person complain about these so far, and considering I connected 18 of them and they all matched up pretty nicely, that's really good. Anyways, super cool panels. They, they'll have a ton of these for years, so I don't think you guys have to worry about these going out of stock. But yeah, pretty nice. And we built this array for nothing in less than an hour. Also consider the cost savings of putting these on the ground. I know it's not recommended, but think about how good the output is for the price. You can just string these on the ground any day of the week. It takes literally minutes. If you wanted this many panels on a house, you would spend about $16,000, plus the interest on a 20-year loan. But instead, you could just throw these on the ground and power your electric car or your air conditioner. Your electricity bill could be reduced, and you don't need to have a permit to have these on the ground. I looked up the city ordinances, and no one proved me wrong in the last video. And it's an off-grid system. So you could just wire up an air conditioner and disconnect it from the grid, or you could have an automatic transfer switch for solar systems so that when the battery voltage gets too low, it switches back over to grid to power your air conditioner at night, depending on how many batteries you have. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. Super cheap solar array, and yeah, pretty impressive results. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.